middle of processing some clay and uh, it's part of my new formula uh, that I'm using for uh, a regular throwing clay and uh, fiber clay or paper clay and they both start with a, a certain percentage of this uh, dug clay that I have and I started actually about three months ago by taking the clay and uh, spreading it out so it dried, busting it up uh, to s smaller pieces and then putting it through a thick like a half inch uh, screen just to get all the big stones or branches or whatever out. I just took it and I put it in five gallon buckets with wa uh, water to cover and just let it sort of bubble and ferment. Fermentation uh, ages the clay and I find that that's the easiest time to do it is when it just has all the garbage or whatever in there, all the impurities, rocks, whatever. And my, my thinking on it is that there's going to be more uh, bacteria the more foreign objects there are in there at that point. Then I scoop the clay out and put it into buckets with enough water to make, um, I'd say, a, a fairly thick slip, uh, similar to casting slip. I have the table height set so that it's about maybe an inch clearance. And I checked that before with an empty bucket to see about how much I needed. And then uh, my drill press, it'll stay at that height. I can move it back and forth because it's on this rack and pinion. And I just slide it over, then take my bucket up onto, and then slide the table back underneath. Now this drill press has a variable speed with the pulley system here. And I start at the slowest speed because I don't want it to, uh, I can actually bend these paddle rods especially if you don't have a good one, you want to get a nice uh, strong one to begin with. But I started at the slowest speed and churned it until it churned freely. And I let it run for about 15, maybe 20 minutes, and then shut it off and fill down around the bucket to make sure that it's all, uh, there's no clay stuck to the inside of the bucket. Then I stepped up to the next speed. And you can tell when it's going the right speed when it's, when it's the right thickness by the size of the cone, the roll pull down in there. If you start at this point and you have it really wet, it's going to go through your sieves a lot easier. But it's going to take a lot longer to dry out. When I use it right away, then I usually make it a little bit thicker and just put up with the fact that it's going to take longer to get through the sieves. And you know, if I know it's going to set a long time, I'll make it a little wetter than it's real fast to work through. Next, I took a uh, strainer, just a, a kitchen strainer. This one is uh, reinforced on the bottom. It's pretty strong. It has maybe, um, I would say, bigger than a 16th inch uh, square mesh. And just poured all the slip through to get uh, all the stones up because there were some like marble sized stones. Uh, with every stage of this, every time I put it into a new bucket, I make sure the bucket is totally clean, no uh, sand or gravel or anything down in the bottom. Okay, that's, uh, that's what I got out of uh, five gallons. I'm using a, a, a Foley uh, sifter. This is a, it's actually vintage. I collect vintage uh, and antique kitchen collectibles. And uh, this one's not worth a whole lot. I think I paid 75 cents for it at a uh, garage sale or maybe an estate sale. And the nice thing, it does have this little handle. Because at this point, all I really have is fairly fine gravel, but I want to get all that out. Clean bucket, I've washed my hands and the ladle. I don't want to contaminate this at any point, especially not now as it starts to get fine. That's what's in there now, the size of the gravel that's in there. I've shown this in a, in a previous video, this uh, machine that I use, so I'm not going to go over that. but. Uh, I just want to show you that uh, how I set it up now. I adjust my speed to a point where I know it's not going to splash a lot. And I have, have it going up and down. And there's probably about a uh, maybe half inch, maybe a little bit larger half inch, you know, half inch gap underneath this paddle. On the way up it creates a suction and pulls the fine sand that's in the sieve out so that the slip can go underneath.
I used to take a squeegee and go back and forth and get the last of this down through, but I found that and I figure all I'm doing is wearing out my, my sieve and these things are fairly expensive, you know, they're, they're 25, 30 bucks a piece and you know, I don't want to wear it out doing something that just takes too long anyway. When I get down to the very bottom of, of a uh, bucket, you see how I'm moving it to the side, but I'm not actually scraping the bottom. Your sieve, bounce it up and down. Creates that suction on the bottom. The sand will actually jump off of the sieve and the liquid will quickly go underneath. You might wonder if it's worth going through all this trouble to process dug clay or even to go through the work of reclaiming clay. For me personally, I definitely think it's worth it to take the clay from the ground and come up with your own formula for, for a clay that suits your needs, you like to work with, gives you even more pride in, in your work, I think. If you want to look at it financially, it took me about two hours to process 50 pounds of dug clay. That 50 pounds of moist dug clay will eventually be 150 pounds of clay ready for the wheel. I figured out my cost for all the materials to make that 150 pounds of clay. That comes to about $17. The total time to process that clay till it's ready for the wheel is about three hours, maybe a little longer, and that's, that's taking my time doing it. Having gone to the ceramic supply store and bought my moist clay, it would have cost me $87 plus tax for that much clay. So I'm saving $70, and if you figure my labor, it's uh, kind of like making over $20 an hour, which is, uh, which is not bad for something that I enjoy doing.